have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Well, well, here we are again for another podcast. I want to thank you to our listeners for tuning in to the Jonathan Live podcast. I am Cynthia R. Bennett, your host. As always, I want to take a second to thank the owner of Elations Radio, Kimmy Kim, Miss Kimmy Robinson. Here on the Jada for Life podcast, we talk about issues, stories, resources, events, and ways to eradicate abuse of all kinds in the community through education, edification, and encouragement. Tonight, I want to share something that is important to me, and I have taken notice with recent events as it relates to domestic violence deaths. But before we get started, I want to let our viewers know that we have four slots available for our summer pilot program called Developer. 
We have also lowered the ages to 9 to 19, 9 to 19, where we would do a week's program on learning the basics of entrepreneurship and mobile app development. We will also talk about social issues such as healthy versus unhealthy relationships, self-esteem issues, how we can raise our self-esteem, and encouragement. The workshop is from 10 to 1230, Monday through Friday, June the 14th through June the 18th. You can register at jadasa.org, J-A-D-A-S-A dot O-R-G. We are here. We're going to be utilizing the CDC guidelines. We will be social distancing. We will be reaching out to parents this Thursday, letting them know about pickup, drop-off and pickup procedures, because we want to make sure that your gyms are in, in capable hands, which they are, but we want to make sure we know who we will be sending them to. So we will be giving you that information and talking with you about that. And upon successful completion, of the program, which happen to attend all five days, the registrants will receive a certificate of completion and a $50 gift certificate. Also, this program, again, is a pilot, but we will be having it in the fall and the spring, and it will be consist of eight Saturdays in the fall. It will be eight Saturdays in spring. And in the summer, we will actually go for four weeks, nine to two. So I want to make sure I get this to you. This is the last week for registration. It's closing this Friday, so I want you to be sure to secure your spot. Amen. So as I said earlier, tonight I want to talk about a demographic group that is overlooked during times of tragedies of domestic violence, death of a loved one, of that, and that is fathers. And I thought about that because of a recent rally I attended of a lady, young lady and her kids, and everybody was there talking, and they allowed, you know, everybody to talk that wanted to talk, but then the father spoke, and then the uncle spoke. And I heard their grief, I heard their pain, I heard the hurt in their voices. And I thought about, you know, wow, you know, we we rarely, we rarely single out the fathers. We know, you know, mothers and, you know, everybody is painful. Everybody is, is hurting, is painful. And, you know, Father's Day is coming around the corner. And I thought about that because I was doing something, and I said, wait a minute, Father's Day is coming up. And as I was talking earlier, that we don't often give fathers the rap or the recognition that we often give mothers. You know, look at the difference in the holidays. Mothers, everybody's going out, restaurants are full, packed, I mean, just everything. And we do for our fathers but it's not on the same level as the mothers. And so I, I, I was thinking about about that, and I noticed that even when we talk about, when you hear it on the news, you talk about uh, some kind of event like that, you know, most of the times you have the mothers, the grandmothers, the aunts or whatever. You have a female talking about, oh, you know, whatever happened, the, the tragedy and stuff, and you rarely – talk about or hear from the father. And I thought about that. I said, there's something we we probably need to raise a platform about that because, you know, everybody didn't come from a broken home. Everybody didn't come from a broken home. Um, and even if they did have a broken home or if they didn't live with their fathers, there are some men who have relationships with their daughters, who have relationships with their nieces, who were stepfathers, who were uncles, who was fathers standing in the gap, who was godfathers, whatever title that they had that they carried for that child, that relationship with their child. So what happens if this particular person, since we are, this platform is about dealing with, you know, abuse and eradicating in the community, so we're really talking about that. But what happens when that child is taken away? The mothers, we, you know, we we feel the pain or hurt, rightfully so, but the fathers do too. But 
they don't have the space to deal with the trauma. As I was telling someone, trauma is not gender based. It's not because you're a woman. You, it's okay for you to fall out. It's okay for you to lose it because you're a woman. But society has told men, and we're part of society as well, because before this rally, I didn't think of it. I, I never gave it a second thought. It just never occurred to me that men, fathers, suffer trauma just as well. But society hasn't given them a space. They still have to keep the family together. They still have to be the quote-unquote strong one. They still have to make sure that food is on the table, a roof is over our heads, or, you know, if they're not living with you, they still have to make sure you good, you good. Everybody has to be good. They got to make sure everybody's good. You okay. But they're falling apart on the inside. They go through as well. Because guess what? Father's Day is coming up. And I thought about that with this particular person, their grandkids and their daughter. Father's Day is coming up. Don't you think that they will feel some kind of way? They will feel some type of void. They will feel some kind of loss because those people are not physically there, just like the way we would feel if it was Mother's Day. Why is it that society, we as well, because we're part of society and we have done it as well. I'm calling myself on the carpet as well. Why is it that we have not allowed them that space to grieve? Why is it that they have to always show strength? Why is it that society has made them feel if you cry, if you if you fall apart, if you, you know, just lose it like some of us do, then they want to peg you as weak. They want to peg you as henpecked. They want to peg you as, as they say, uh, uh, spineless. They want to peg you as something that you're not, all because you had a moment. So our men don't have the chance to have a moment. They don't have a chance to grieve their daughters because everybody don't have strange relationships. I was a daddy's girl. As I was telling someone earlier, it was six girls and three boys in my family. All six of us felt like we were daddy girls because he made us feel that way. He was in the house with us. I felt like I was his special. And when you listen to my other sister, she felt like she was his special. We all felt that way. So I can't imagine if, as a matter of fact, I didn't imagine because I had a sibling who passed before my father. But guess what? We rallied around mama. We rallied around each other, holding each other up. Now, my dad, strong man, five feet, six inches tall. He wasn't tall at all, but strong man. But I don't remember, in my recollection, I don't remember us rallying around him like we rallied around mama because that was his child too. Another situation I thought about, and this is just in my personal family, my niece and her husband, they had buried their only child, a nine-year-old from cancer, their only child. Now, we rallied around, both of them, we was there for all of them, but I don't remember, not because we was biased to her, because she was our niece, I don't remember us rallying around him with the emotional support like we rallied around her. We was there for both of them. We was there through the whole nine yards and everything. But I just don't remember us rallying him emotionally. That was his child, too. 
he lived, they were married, they lived in the same house. He was there with her. He even had to put her on the gurney when she passed. He was there. But we don't, we as society, don't give our men, men, the space to grieve. We haven't done that. And that really came to light to me during this rally. And then the fact I thought about uh, Father's Day, and I was like, oh, okay, Father's Day coming up. You know, it just snuck up on me. And I thought about why is that? Because every holiday, every milestone, if they didn't make the graduation, they should have been a graduate, they should have graduated from college, or they should have been married. He deals with all of that milestone. He deals with the void as well. Because that was his child as well. I think about David in 2 Samuel, how he grieved the death of his child with Bathsheba, how he put himself in sackcloth and ashes, grieving, how he went on a fast, Grieving for that child when he knew the child was going to die. Grieving at the the unsurmountable loss that he was going to have. Grieving for that child. And then not even just grieving for his child, that one. Then he grieved for Amnon when he was killed. Then he turned around and grieved for Absalom when he was killed. Even when he was trying to take the kingdom from him and they was telling him, we go kill him. He said, don't kill him, just rescue him. He he was a man, a king, a mighty warrior, a man after God's own heart. But he still grieved. He still had sorrow. And based on scripture, He had time. He had space. But why don't we give our men that today? I made a comment earlier, too, and I said, you know, I'm not an expert in this field, but I kind of believe that it is intertwined. Why we have so many men and women, but men, I'm talking about men today, who deal with mental illness because they got to keep all this stuff bottled inside. And as I've said, trauma is not gender-based. It doesn't care if you're a male or female. Trauma is trauma. And whether we deal with it and how we deal with it, if we deal with it, determines our healthy outcome. Okay, if they're not dealing with it, how can they move on? If we feel like we can't move on, how can they go on with life? They have the same issues. They deal with shock. That's their baby, especially if they had a relationship with them. Especially, they deal with shock. They deal with denial. Did this really happen? Is my baby gone? Is my daughter gone? Did this really happen? Am I not going to see her again? Ever? Then they replay stuff in their mind as well. Maybe if I had been there, maybe if I had heard her, maybe if I had listened, maybe if I had saw this, maybe if I had, you know, they go back and replay all these scenes in their minds, the what if. What if I had saw this? What if I had really listened and heard this? What if I had, they go through all of that just like we do. They're men. It ain't no gender base. They have emotions just like we have emotions. They're, they go through confusion because they're so entwined and dealing with the grief. Not only with the grief, they got to still go to work. They still got to deal with the rest of the family. They still got to put on this show of strength. They got to show all of this. And, 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 and while they're still grieving and tore up from the flow up on the inside, and then they're confused. You know, co- confusion can set in. You know, what was I doing? Or what was I going? Or what, you know, you know, sometimes we have to, backtrack to figure out, okay, wait a minute, what was I getting ready to do? And you have to backtrack in your mind to go back to, and then, I'll, oh, this is what I was getting ready to do. They go through that as well. 
they deal with the guilt. The fact that I wasn't able to be, I wasn't able to be there to protect her, or, or, or to keep her from this, or I wasn't there. I'm the protector. I was supposed to protect. They go through that. And certainly they go through powerlessness, they're feeling like they're powerlessness, they're powerless because they can't bring them back. They can't change the situation. Men, as they say, men are logic thinkers, women are emotional thinkers. Logically, they cannot figure a way to fix it. They cannot figure a way to bring that person back. So now powerlessness sets in. And after that is anger. Why 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 are we here? Why does this even happen anyway? Why you know, why did this person have to go there? Why why come I didn't see this? Why come I didn't hear this? Why I didn't pick up the phone when she called? Why I didn't go by there when I had that thought in my mind when she popped in my mind why come I just all of that they play all of that grief in their mind and they also have loss of hope as well because not only are they grieving for the child that's gone the child that they no longer have that relationship with, that child that they're no longer going to be able to laugh with and talk with, and they're grieving at the loss of hope, their hopes, their dreams, and their expectation they had for that child. I'm not going to see her or them walk out or graduate. I'm not going to ever see them get married. I'm not going to ever see them fulfill their dreams. The loss of dreams. They're grieving that as well. I'm not going to be able to give her away in marriage. I'm not going to be able to see how my have grandkids around them. I'm not going to ever have grandkids because she's not here. All of these responses that we as females feel, the mamas, the grandmamas, the big mamas, the aunties, the aunts, the godmamas, the men feel the same way. They feel those same emotions. Why is it that society has made it where they feel they can't go to share? They got to go to their homeboys. They got to go to their other the men and talk off privately and then regroup and come back as if they still got this staunch, you know, the the weight of the world on their shoulders. What if they don't want the weight of the world on their shoulders right now? Maybe they want to just release. Why can't we allow them to do that without them feeling like they're less than of a man? Why can't they grieve? Why can't we give them that space? We should. This rally, I went for one thing. I got it. I got answers. I talked. But I also left there with revelation. And it was after when I heard the father and the uncle speak to realize there is men that hurt. I knew it, but you know how you don't put it in the forefront of your mind. You just so focused on the woman, the mother, the whatever. But we cannot afford to leave the men out because they hurt, they cry, they feel, they have a void, but yet they still have to show that strength. Again, like I say, we can fall out, have temper tantrums, whatever, and then we blame it on the grief or whatever. And, you know, we get over it, people get over it, whatever. But let a man fall out and have a temper tantrum. We hold that over their head forever. We look at them different. Everybody has a moment. Everybody. Everybody has a moment. Every season is only but four months. Seasons change. Whether the weather make you think it's another season, but it's still that season. 
It could be snowing in June. It's still summer. They have seasons. They have moments. We need to allow them to have those moments. Why isn't there a, a, a facility for them to, to talk about this? Because there's trauma. They have to deal with the trauma. Father's Day coming up next week. Next week? Father's Day is coming up. Don't you know those fathers who have dealt with a loss due to, and not, and not just any loss, I mean, you know, any loss is a loss. But I'm talking about domestic abuse since this is the platform. But any death of a child, any death of a child, don't you know they're going to fill that void when Father's Day come around and that child is no longer here? So what can we do? What can we do to help? So that, And then they blow up at the wrong person or at the wrong situation. And it, sometimes, you know, like us or like me, I'm going to put myself out there. You, we can, I can blow up and mess up something even worse. So what can we do with them? You know, we allow them their privacy. We encourage them. You know what? You are grieving. It's okay to grieve. It's okay. Sometimes they just need to hear that it is okay. Grieving is part of the process. Get it out. You don't want to keep it on the inside because if you keep it on the inside, that's when sickness comes, disease comes, stuff like that festers, doubt, hatred, resentment, unforgiveness, all of that, all of those emotions are breeding grounds for sickness and disease. So we need for them to be able to have that space. We need for them to be able to be vulnerable at that time so they can release. I tend to think that there is a correlation between that and mental illness. That's just me personally. Like I said, I will talk with some other people that I am, uh, you know, in close contact with who are familiar with mental illness to get that because I think there is a correlation here. You got to get what's on the inside out. Why don't we allow that for our people, for our men? our fathers, our grandfathers, our uncles, our god daddies, our step daddies, our cousins, the men in our families. Because when mama passed, I'm sure my brothers felt the same pain I felt. But they couldn't release the way we release because society Society has us thinking that the man is supposed to always be strong. Everybody is not strong 100% of the time, all of the time. I don't care how cold you put glass in the refrigerator. I don't care how thick that glass is. You put it in hot water, hot water long enough, it's going to shatter. So we, as I close, I, I wanted to bring this out in the community because Father's Day is coming up. There's going to be some fathers who are grieving because they baby, they baby girl is not here. They grandkids is not here. That daughter that they was close to is not here. So they're going to have a void, just like we would feel a void. They're going to have some emotions, just like we have emotions. They're going to have some feelings of resentment and hurt and loss. And some of them probably want to just want the day to hurry up and come and go because of the trauma that they probably are still currently dealing with or have, have dealt with. 
But Father's Day, I wanted to acknowledge the men, fathers, grandfathers, all of you all in your respective positions. I want to acknowledge you and let you know I see you. I support you. I encourage you. I'm asking God to comfort you because fathers grieve as well. And as I said earlier, trauma is not gender-based. I want you to be well. I want you to be whole. Remember, Jadasa, 24-7, 365 days, all day, every day. And with that being said, good night. Need a ride.